Welcome to Thriller Vault, where thriller writers tell their favorite stories. Tonight, I have a special short story from my novel, The Predator Hunter. It's the story of a young man with a very unique hobby. Here is I Hunt Predators. Kyle Summers stood in the waiting area, holding the restaurant pager and watching the entrance. The revolving door bustled with well-to-do people coming and going. The three-story brick restaurant was busy as usual. He glanced at his outfit. I need some new clothes. He wore a button-down shirt, khakis, and work boots, his best ensemble, but obviously many years old and a bit baggy for the current fashion trends. One of his phones buzzed in his pocket. Lori, I just parked. Be there in a minute. Kyle, see you soon. Dumbass, why did I text an exclamation point? I already looked needy and desperate. I am needy and desperate. Relax, keep it together. It would be better if she didn't know that. She stepped from the revolving door, looking even better than her profile picture. Curves in the right places, round face, large brown eyes, and a button nose. He approached her, weaving in and out of the middle-aged clientele waiting for a table. She looked around, her shiny chestnut hair moving about her shoulders like a freaking shampoo commercial. Beautiful, and out of my league. It wasn't that Kyle was ugly. He was actually fairly handsome underneath his outdated clothes. He had short dark hair, a square jaw, and a symmetrical face. He was fit and young in his mid-twenties, but he wasn't exceptional in any way, and he felt deficient in many ways. Moving closer, he smiled as he caught her eye. Her eyes narrowed for a split second, giving him a once-over, then a tight smile. Lori? Kyle? Thank you for coming out. He held up the restaurant pager. Hopefully our table will be ready soon. I did call ahead seating. As if on cue, the pager buzzed and the red lights blazed. They'd been chosen. They were led upstairs by a hostess and seated in a cozy booth with a window view. The waitress appeared shortly thereafter. They ordered beers and filet mignon with cauliflower mash, salad, and bread that tasted like donuts. Kyle thought, maybe she's the one. We ordered the exact same thing, like an old married couple. They handed their menus to the young waitress. Lori's phone buzzed on the table. She scrolled and tapped for a few minutes. Kyle watched, his optimism fading by the second. Finally, she looked up. So, Lori said, folding her hands in her lap. You're in construction? He nodded. Landscape construction and maintenance. That's why I don't have a lot of clothes. Everything gets dirty. She scrunched her nose as if she'd smelled something foul. Why did I say that? You like work outside? I thought you ran the company. His stomach tumbled. No, I I work for the company. Are you like a manager or something? He dipped his head as if being scolded. No. So you like work on a crew or something? Yes. Her phone buzzed. She tapped and thumb typed. You seem disappointed. She still thumb typed. You seem disappointed. She set down her phone. I heard you the first time. Are you? Disappointed? Yes. No, I don't know you well enough to be disappointed. I'm annoyed, but not disappointed. Why are you annoyed? Just because I work for a landscaping company? Lori blew out of breath. You said you were in construction. That implies you, like, own the company or at least have a decent job. And your your profile says you're six feet tall. I bet you're more like 5'10". The waitress set their beers on the table. Thank you, Kyle said to the young waitress. Your salads will be out shortly. She turned on her sneakers, leaving them alone again. Kyle turned back to Lori. Every guy on a hinge adds at least two inches to their height. If I put 5'10", people would think I was 5'8". She shrugged and took a swig of her beer. You ask me why I'm annoyed and I'm telling you. Kyle rubbed his eyes with his thumb and index finger. Working in landscaping isn't my main job. I do something else. And what's that? While she had asked the question, she didn't seem to care about hearing his response. I hunt pedophiles. He drank a bit of beer. She leaned forward, her eyes widening. You what? I hunt and expose pedophiles. Like men who like little girls? And boys. The waitress dropped off their salads. After the waitress left, Lori asked. Do you work for the police? No, I work by myself. Well, mostly by myself. My friend Troy films for me. I don't understand. You don't work for the police, but you hunt and expose pedophiles? Yes. Kyle took a bite of his salad and washed it down with some beer. But how do you do it? You can't, like, arrest them. I meet up with these guys and confront them on video. Then I give the evidence to the police. 
What evidence? Lori dug into her salad. I pose as young girls and boys online. I chat on a few apps, and I have fake profiles on a bunch of dating sites. I chat with these guys until they want to meet. You have to be 18 on dating sites. My profiles say 19, but I tell the guys I'm 13 or 12 when they contact me, and my profile pictures are of people who look very young. Then I meet and confront them about why they wanted to meet a 12-year-old girl or whatever. She narrowed her eyes. Where do you get the profile pictures? When I started, I bought images from Shutterstock. I'm not sure if that was legal, but now my audience sends me pictures to use. The pictures are of people who are adults now, but from when they were kids. What about the police? I give the evidence to the police and then post everything online, so everyone knows who these pedophiles are. Lori set down her fork and scrunched her face. You, like, talk to these pervs? He nodded. What do they say? All sorts of things. Sometimes the conversations are non-sexual, but sometimes they're not. I get a lot of penis pictures. It's awful. Kyle shook his head. But if they're talking to me, that's one less child they're talking to. And when I confront them, everyone knows who they are, so they're less likely to hurt a child in the future. How many guys have you gotten the police to arrest? Kyle cleared his throat. None. But I just gave this detective a bunch of evidence. Where do you post the videos? YouTube and Facebook mainly, plus my website. Do you have a lot of followers? Not yet, but it's growing. Lori frowned. How are people going to, like, see that these guys are pedophiles if nobody watches your videos? Like I said, I'm getting more followers and the police are going to make arrests. But they haven't made any arrests. Not yet. How can you even talk to these freaks? It's not easy, but I guess I'm kind of numb to the stuff they say. She pursed her lips. Do you, like, get off on it? Kyle sat up straighter. No. Why would you think that? Because normal people wouldn't want anything to do with these pervs. What about cops and Chris Hansen? They actually arrest these guys. They don't friend them online. It's weird. She crossed her arms over her chest. I'm not friending them. I don't ever bring up the sex stuff. I have a code. She looked over her shoulder. Where's the bathroom? It's downstairs. I'll be right back. Lori grabbed her purse, slid from the booth, stepped downstairs, and disappeared into the crowd. Kyle sat alone, feeling self-conscious, eating his salad. He glanced around at the tables of happy couples and groups. He thought about loneliness and how it's much worse in a crowd. He peered out the window and spotted his date hurrying to her car. Kyle hung his head and rubbed his temples. I'm such an idiot. His decoy phone buzzed in his pocket with a message. Hurricane Ron. Hey baby, what are you doing? Cuddly Kate. Just eating dinner? Hurricane Ron. By yourself? Cuddly Kate. Yeah. Frowny face. Hurricane Ron. I could come pick you up and take you out. Cuddly Kate. Can't. My mom and her stupid boyfriend will be back soon. Hurricane Ron. We're still on for next weekend, right? Cuddly Kate. Yes. Smiley face. Hurricane Ron. Did you get my pick? Cuddly Kate. You have a nice body. Hurricane Ron. Thanks, baby. I bet you have a hot body. I wish you'd send me a naked pic. Please. Cuddly Kate. You know I'm shy. I'm only 13. Hurricane Ron. I wish I could kiss you right now. Cuddly Kate. Where? Hurricane Ron. All over. Smiley face. The waitress approached with their entrees. She glanced at the empty seat across from Kyle and set the warm plates on the table. Be careful, they're hot. Can you, uh, bring me the check and some to-go boxes? The waitress tilted her head. Is something wrong? My friend had to leave. I'm sorry. Kyle looked away for a moment. Oh. Her face fell, then brightened. It's no problem. I'll be right back with your check in the containers for your food. Kyle went back to Cuddly Kate's chat. Hurricane Ron. You still there? Cuddly Kate. Gotta go. My mom's home. BFN. Bye for now. Hurricane Ron. See you soon. Love you, baby. Cuddly Kate. Smiley face. Thank you so much for watching and listening to Thriller Vault. If you enjoyed this story, please check out my novel, The Predator Hunter. It is available as an ebook, print book, and audio book. If you enjoyed this content, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. I hope to see you all next week. Thank you.